Buddhism is fundamentally about solving a problem. The problem that Buddhism is meant to solve is the problem of the ubiquity of suffering in human and other life. The root of suffering, and hence the root of samsara, of cyclic existence, is attachment and aversion. Attachment to things that we want or things to which we want to hold on to, aversion to things that we don't want or to the unpleasant circumstances in which we find ourselves. We're all familiar with attachment and aversion. We have songs about attachment and aversion. We've got theater about attachment and aversion. And each of us knows that our own lives are conditioned by things that we desire, people to whom we're attached, things that we want to happen, our own happiness, or by aversion, suffering we want to avoid, things that we dislike and that we want to escape from. Less obviously, and this is part of the deep insight of the Buddha, Attachment and aversion are themselves conditioned by primal confusion, or is it sometimes translated ignorance? That is a deep misunderstanding of the fundamental nature of reality. We'll be exploring the ramifications of that misunderstanding throughout these sessions. But one of the things that we might point to right now is that a lot of that confusion is the assignment of essence or intrinsic identity to things that lack it, the sense of a real distinction between self and other, a kind of dualistic relationship to the world that we, we inhabit, and a sense of ourselves as solid selves at the center of a world. Now, each of these kinds of confusion is in a very deep sense innate. You might say that we're wired for these kinds of confusions, just as we're wired for optical illusions, like the Mueller-Liar illusion. But to say that they are deep and innate doesn't mean that they are not also philosophical views about the nature of reality. And we see that because we often see philosophy used to deepen, to explore, and to ramify precisely these views. Philosophical views about the nature of the self are, after all, ramifications and articulations of innate self-grasping. Philosophical views about necessity or about essences are ramifications of our innate tendency to see things as more solid and more intrinsically real than they are, and so forth. And so, even if the confusions that trap us in cyclic existence are innate, the remedy for those confusions isn't being born in some other way. The remedy for those confusions is to do the kind of philosophy that can extirpate them. And so, the tool for the extirpation of the primal confusion that lies at the root of suffering is philosophy. And if we're going to progress on the Buddhist path at all, philosophy is therefore indispensable. We might also note that right at the very beginning of the Buddha's career, when he was teaching the very first discourse that he ever gave, the Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta, or the discourse turning the wheel of Dharma at Sarnath, he announced the Eightfold Noble Path. And part of the Eightfold Path is right view. And the view that we're talking about here is a view about the fundamental nature of reality. That is a philosophical account of what the world is like. Right view doesn't only comprise metaphysical ideas. It comprises ethical ideas, epistemological ideas, phenomenological and logical linguistic reflection. That is, Part of right view is understanding how we ought to behave, how we ought to act with others, and how we ought to perfect ourselves morally. But part of right view is understanding the fundamental nature of reality. Another part of right view, the epistemological, is to understand the nature of knowledge and the mechanisms by means of which we can attain knowledge and attain understanding. And when we think about right view from a phenomenological perspective, we try to think about how to understand the deepest nature of our own experience, because it's, after all, our own experience that lies at the heart of all of our ethical, metaphysical, and epistemological comportment to the world. That's the phenomenological aspect. So all of these are comprised under right view, and to understand and to prosecute right view on the Eightfold Path, philosophical reflection is necessary.